This is Dr. Hayek and this video is about gases. In today's video, I'm going to discuss the gas stoichiometry and Dalton's law. Now, before I move on, let me remind you that two other videos have been recorded on this chapter, so please check them before you check this video. Now, this video is going to be a part of a series of six videos that will fully discuss in details the gases. So please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now in a previous video, I have discussed the ideal gas law. Using this law, we will be able to find or to calculate the molar volume at the standard conditions of temperature and pressure. The standard conditions of temperature and pressure states that the temperature is equal to 0 degrees Celsius or 273.15 Kelvin and the pressure is equal to one atmosphere. If we rearrange the expression of the ideal gas law, so we get V is equal to nRT over P. Now, if we replace these terms by their values and we cancel the units, as you can see in here, we get that the volume is equal to 22.42 liter. Now, since this is the volume of one mole of gas, we will call this volume the molar volume at standard conditions of temperature and pressure. We can also look for the molar mass from the expression of the ideal gas law. So we know that the number of moles is equal to mass divided by the molar mass. If we replace this in the expression of the ideal gas law, we get that PV is equal to MRT divided by the molar mass. Now, or we rearrange it to get the molar mass is equal to the mass multiplied by RT divided by PV. In a similar way, we can do this with the density. So now we know that the density is equal to M over V. So the pressure is going to be equal to the density times RT divided by the molar mass. Now let's discuss Dalton's law of partial pressures. Dalton said, that for a mixture of gases in a container, the total pressure of these gases is equal to the sum of the partial pressures of the individual gases if they were to exert it in the container alone. So now, a P total is equal to P1 plus P2 plus P3 plus etc. It depends how many gases we mix together. So if we have two gases and we mix them together, the total pressure of the mixture will be equal to the P1 plus P2. P1 and P2 are called the partial pressures of the individual gases. So now, looking at this expression and keeping in mind that for, for an ideal gas, we can say that P is equal to nRT over V. So we can replace every pressure by its expression. So we have P1 is equal to N1RT over V. Now the volume will not change because it's the volume of the container and it's the same container. And the temperature will not change because all the gases exist at the same temperature in this case. So for P2 is gonna be N2RT over V and etc. So therefore now we can take RT over V as a common factor and we have N1 plus N2 plus N3 multiplied by RT over V. This is going to give us that the total pressure is equal to the total number of mole multiplied by RT over V. Now note that the end total is the total number of particles of the gas exists in the mixture. So this tells us that the pressure exerted by an ideal gas is not affected by the identity of the gas particles. Now let's discuss the mole fraction. So the mole fraction is the ratio of the number of mole of a given component in a mixture to the total number of mole in the mixture. So the mole fraction is equal to N1 divided by the total number of mole. Keep in mind that the total number of mole is the sum of all number of moles of components in the mixture. Now remember, we can use the ideal gas law to say that N is equal to P multiplied by V over RT. In a similar way to what we did before, we can replace N by the pressure and we can get that the mole fraction can also be found from the pressure. So the mole fraction of one is going to be equal to the partial pressure of one divided by the total pressure. 
So now, whether we have number of mole or we have a pressure, we should be able to find the mole fraction of a gas in a mixture. So looking at this expression, if we rearrange it, we can also find the partial pressure of a gas from the mole fraction of a gas by saying P1 is equal to the mole fraction 1 multiplied by the total pressure. Now this is very important when we are solving a question on a gas stoichiometry since instead of working with number of mole, we can just simply work with the pressure. Now Dalton's law is very important especially when we are collecting a gas over liquid. Consider the following example where we have the reaction between zinc solid and an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride. Now the reaction is going to produce hydrogen gas. Using the following setup, the hydrogen gas will be collected over water. Now at the same time that the hydrogen gas is getting collected over water, there is another gas that's getting collected with it, which is the vapor pressure of water itself. So the gas collected is not going to be pure hydrogen, it's going to be hydrogen plus water vapor. So if I were to calculate the pressure of hydrogen alone, how would I do this? Now keep in mind that the total pressure of the mixture is going to be equal to the pressure of hydrogen plus pressure of the water vapor. So the pressure of hydrogen is going to be equal to the total pressure minus the pressure of the water vapor. So how can I determine the pressure of hydrogen experimentally? So if I'm running the same experiment where zinc is reacting with an aqueous solution of hydrogen chloride to give me hydrogen gas. Now, the pressure of hydrogen can be found experimentally using the following method. I will be measuring the atmospheric pressure and the height of the water remaining in the tube. And therefore I can say that the atmospheric pressure is equal to the pressure of the mixture, which is here pressure of hydrogen plus pressure of water vapor, plus the height divided by 13.6. And therefore here I can say that the pressure of hydrogen is equal to the atmospheric pressure minus the pressure of the water vapor minus H divided by 13.6. Now keep in mind, here we are collecting the gas or hydrogen over water, it's not mercury, so I cannot use just H. So that's why to convert it to millimeter Hg, I just divide by the density of mercury, which is 13.6. I will add the link below so you can see the experiment in real life in a lab. I hope this video is helpful to you. So please like, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you next time.